I'm Rob Loftus and I'll be your instructor this term. The first greeting was from my son, Joey. The purpose of this presentation is to show you around the Angel page for this course and to highlight important parts of the syllabus. So let's get going. Before you can do anything online in the course, you will need to take a short quiz on the contents of the syllabus. You will need to score 100 points on the quiz to unlock the rest of the course. Don't worry, you can take the test as many times as you like. You can look at the syllabus during the test, and the test stays the same each time you take it. The test is just here to ensure that everyone knows what, up front what they are signing up for. If you are watching this video, you probably have already seen the where the syllabus quiz is located. It is here, right over the link for this video. When you logged on, though, you probably didn't see any of these folders marked 1 to 4, or this folder for the drop boxes. Once you pass the syllabus quiz, they will all be visible. In this part of the video, I'm going to walk you through the overview pages of the syllabus, and then we'll go back to Angel, and I'll show you around. The syllabus is quite long. If you look down here, you will see that it is 27 pages long. The reason for that is that it contains complete instructions for all of the assignments, including a lot of advice for writing the paper, and no less than 22 suggested paper topics. That's 10 pages of material right there. Here's the table of contents. Some of this information is stuff you will want to read carefully right away. Other information you will need to refer to later in the semester when certain assignments are due. The instructions for the paper, for instance, are going to be very important when, the, when it is time to write the paper, but are less important right now. I recommend that you carefully read the course overview, the list of readings and PowerPoints, and the instructions for the discussion board right away. You can skim the instructions for the paper, the policies, and the online resources, and return to them for more detail when appropriate. First up on the overview pages is my contact information. The best way to contact me is via email. You can either email me directly at jloftus at lorraineccc.edu, or you can email me through Angel's email system. This semester, my office hours are 10 to 11 uh, in the morning, Monday through Fridays, or by appointment. In general, I will be on campus weekday mornings and early afternoons, and be working from home late in the afternoons and on weekends. Notice that my email address is jloftus at lorraineccc.edu, even though I go by Rob. They assigned me the name James J. Loftus because my full name is James Robert Loftus, and they were just reading it off a of form. My name also appears as James in Angel, but please call me Rob. The syllabus has all of my phone numbers, including my home phone number. I am working from home this semester, so please feel free to call me there. Don't call after 8 on school nights, though, because that's the kids' bedtime important announcements. If you have a disability and need special accommodation, please contact me early in the semester. This is the textbook we're using. It's De Grazia, Mapes, and Brand Ballard, Biomedical Ethics, 7th edition. I just switched to this textbook, so I'm now using the same book as almost all the other bioethics instructors at LCCC. You will probably find leftover references to the previous textbook I used, Munson's Intervention and Reflection, scattered in the videos and on the Angel page for this course. I'm in the process of updating all of them, but they will not be finished by the time the course starts. There will be some additional readings not in the textbook, including some that I scanned from the, pre the textbook I used previously. These will be posted as .pdf files to Angel. Here is a breakdown of your grade. There will be discussion boards, two drafts of a paper, four tests, exercises, and videos. Let's go through them in order. 
A big part of your grade comes from the discussion boards. They serve the same function as classroom discussion in land-based classes, except that I can keep track of individual comments and actually give you grades on them, which is what I'm going to do. The next section of the syllabus has a lot of advice for giving thoughtful comments on the discussion boards and a description of my system for grading. Another big chunk of the grade is the paper and paper rewrite. These total 40% of your grades. As I said, the syllabus discusses my expectations for these extensively. Papers in philosophy are not like papers in other courses, so you will need to read this section very carefully. Another 30% of your grade will come from four tests. These will assess your knowledge of the factual content and basic concepts of the course, and will mostly consist of multiple choice, matching, and fill-in-the-blank questions. For each test, there is a review sheet and a practice test posted to ANGEL. A smaller portion of your grade will come from online exercises. These will let you practice with the concepts we will be using in this course and explore your own ideas. These exercises will not be graded. Instead, you will get 100 points for simply completing the exercise. The points should be awarded automatically when you complete the exercise. If they don't show up, you can email me. Finally, there are videos you need to watch, like this one. Again, you get full credit for simply completing the video, which should be credited automatically. If you watch a video and it doesn't show up in Gradebook, please email me. The course timeline is also here in the course overview section. The course divides into four parts corresponding to the four guiding concepts that I am using to organize this course. Those concepts, again, are autonomy, justice, moral status, and naturalness. We'll talk more about the, those concepts in video two. In the meantime, you should see that there are due dates where you should expect to finish each section of the course. You should finish section one by September 28th. You should finish Section 2 by October 26th. You should finish Section 3 by November 16th. And you should finish Section 4 at the end of the course, December 16th. When I say that you should have a, a certain section done by a certain date, that is just a guideline. No material in that section will be closed off. The timeline also has the, d the dates the tests become available. Test 1 opens September 21st. Test 2 opens October 22nd. Test 3 opens November 12th. And Test 4 opens Nove December 3rd. Notice that these are not the due dates for the test. You can take the tests any time up until the end of the course. These are just the dates the tests become available. Finally, we have the due dates for the paper and the paper rewrite. The first draft of the paper is due November 9th, and the rewrite is due December 14th. The dates I am giving you for the papers are firm deadlines. They are not like the dates for completing the course sections. The reason for this is that I need time to grade your papers and to get comments back to you for the rewrites. Finally, in the overview section, there is a note on the time commitment you should expect to make to this course, the course outcomes, and a detailed course description that explains more of the content of this course, which I recommend that you read carefully. Angel, you'll be on a tab labeled Syllabus and Announcements Start Here. Hopefully you have seen any new announcements and, and downloaded the syllabus. The other tabs are Course Resources, Lessons, Communicate, and Report. Course Resources just contains useful links. Nothing in here is mandatory. These are just things you might find useful when you are writing your paper. For instance, there's a list of abortion laws by state, uh, and there's a link to the Alan Guttmacher Institute, which has some wonderful data on abortion in America. The Communicate tab allows you to email. You have your inbox, etc. 
report is where you can check your grades. And this will be very important as the semester goes on. I assume everyone will want to check their grades. Most of the time you are an angel, however, you will be here under the Lessons tab. Once you have completed the syllabus quiz and unlocked the course content, you will see four folders corresponding to the four main sections of this course. Autonomy, Justice, Moral Status, and Naturalness. There is also a fifth folder for paper and test materials. When you go inside one of the sections devoted to a major moral concept, the first thing you see is a list of activities and objectives for that section. This is a Word document that you can download, like this. I'm just going to save it to the desktop. Uh, and then once it's saved, we can open it. There it is. The first part of the document is a checklist of things you need to do for this section. Here you can see the readings you need to do, the videos you have to watch, the exercises for the section, and a reminder to participate in the discussion board. You should use this to be sure that you have completed all of the activities for a section before taking the test for that section. The other half of the activities and objectives document is a list of objectives for that section. This lets you know why you are doing what you are doing and lines up with a list of objectives on the syllabus. This is now standard for most LCCC courses. All of the activities you will have to do are housed in subfolders for that section. So, there's a readings folder. It contains a list of readings from the textbook along with PDF files for any readings that are not in the text. For section two, the extra readings include Mill's famous essay on liberty, a study of attitudes towards autonomy in different ethnic groups, and a response to the paper by James Rachels in the textbook on active and passive euthanasia. Beneath the readings folder is the videos folder. Each video will be posted to both iTunes U and the YouTube channel for this course. The folder will have a page where you can watch the YouTube video embedded in Angel and instructions on how to download the videos from iTunes U. I am also posting the PowerPoint slides that I used to create the videos um, in in these presentations so that you can use them to study. The next folder down contains the discussion forums. It contains instructions for the discussion forum and the discussion forum itself. The instructions have simply been copied and pasted from the syllabus for your convenience. After these folders there are exercises, review sheets, and optional readings. Folders 2, 3, and 4 all basically look like this. The bottommost folder contains material you will need for the paper and mat material you will need for the tests. The paper section contains the drop box at, for the first draft and the drop box for the second draft. All papers must be submitted to these drop boxes following the instructions in the syllabus. I will not count a paper as submitted unless it appears in the drop box. Also, there is a link to a video describing plagiarism and the citation conventions and all sorts of other important stuff, which I recommend you watch. Under the test headings, you will see the practice tests and review sheets. When the tests become available, they will also appear in this section. The schedule for the rollout of the tests is in the syllabus. And that's basically all you need to know, so enjoy the course.